Hi, this is Graham Helfrich, Technical Advisor Manager for the Engineering Software here at IHS Market. Welcome to the weekly Did You Know episode where we learn how to do something of value that you probably didn't know about your IHS Market engineering software. Today we're going to talk about spitballs. Who knows what a spitball is? Well, if you think back to junior high or high school, you might remember either flinging or getting hit by a spitball. Let's look how a spitball is made. First, you get some paper, you tear it up into pieces like this. Then you're going to roll it up into a little ball. Then you're going to either put it in your mouth or get it wet some other way. Next, you're going to need a tube. So you can either use a straw or more likely you're going to take your pen. You're going to empty out the insides and use it as a tube. You're going to put the spitball in it and fire it out at your friend. Now, what if instead of a tube like this, you were able to use a bigger size straw? What do you think would happen? Well, the spitball would not go very far. Why is that? Well, it has to do with the velocity. A pen is the perfect size for your lungs to shoot your breath out at a high enough velocity to send that spitball flying. But in comparison, if you used a bigger diameter straw, you can't get the velocity high enough to get the spitball going out quickly. And guess what? This is exactly what happens in your gas well. A bigger diameter straw is like flowing up your casing. And a smaller diameter straw is like flowing up the tubing. And with the tubing, we're going to get a higher velocity. Now in the classroom, you want this velocity to send that spitball flying out as fast as you can. And in the well, we want that same velocity to move water from the reservoir up to the surface to prevent liquid loading. So why don't engineers install tubing right away? Well, the main answer is friction. So velocity is our friend when we want it to help prevent liquid loading. But velocity can be your enemy when it comes to friction because it causes an extra pressure drop in the well bore and then can reduce our flow rate or drawdown. Now, if you have a really great gas well with a really high production rate at the start, it can make sense to flow up the casing without any tubing. And that will help minimize the friction while also having enough velocity, again, if the rate is very high, to lift all the liquids up. But as the rate declines, the well is going to liquid load. So to avoid this, we're, we need to install tubing at the right time to increase that gas velocity and prevent liquid loading. The hard part is timing. So if we install the tubing too early, we're going to decrease our production by adding unwanted back pressure on the sand face from the friction in the tubing. Alternatively, if we wait too long to install the tubing, the well will have already liquid loaded and we've lost production from liquid loading. So what if I told you using Harmony Enterprise, we're going to be able to predict the perfect time to install tubing in your well to maximize your production. That's today's topic, when to install tubing in your gas well. Let's look at a case study right now. Okay, so here we are in Harmony Enterprise. I've got about 60 wells here. This can be conventional or unconventional. It doesn't matter. 60 wells. And the particular well we're going to look at here has about six, seven months of production history. We have a gas rate that's pretty good, 13 million cubic feet per day down to about 9 million. We've got our casing pressures. We've got our water gas ratio. Now, this particular well has no tubing installed yet. It's only casing, okay? So if we want to check has this well liquid loaded or not yet, we'll go turn on our liquid loading diagnostic and we can see that our red rate, the actual rate the well's produced at, has historically been above our critical lift rate, both Turner and Coleman. So this is good as far as historically there's been enough rate to provide the velocity in the casing needed to remain above our liquid loading rate. That's good. Now I recommend going and checking out my episode number six if you're curious how to do this really quickly for all your wells and also how to filter liquid loaded data out of your RT analysis. Okay, what's next? Well, we need to figure out when the well is going to liquid load. So for this well, I've done a traditional RTA unconventional workflow. I've done my URM plot. I see I've got linear flow here after the cleanup data. For the reservoir model, I've got an initial history match here and I've got a forecast. So for my forecast, because I'm using the analytical model in this case, I'm actually able to pick wellhead. And that way, when I put in a wellhead flowing pressure constraint, it's actually going to convert, going to convert this wellhead pressure down to a bottom hole flowing pressure as the rate naturally declines out of the reservoir. Okay, so this is kind of an advantage 
If you want to use an analytical model, you can use a wellhead pressure constraint. I mentioned the software I'm ver using is version 2020.1, which it came out in uh, May 2020. We're going to keep improving this, so you may see uh, so you may see some additional enhancements uh, for this wellhead forecasting with the numerical models in the future. Now, how do we predict when the well is going to liquid load? Well, what I'm going to do is go to my optimized license. This is the replacement for virtual well, if you've ever used virtual well for nodal analysis. We call it optimized in Harmony Enterprise. I'm going to do something called liquid loading monitoring. When I pick this, what I can do is I can pick one or I can pick all the wells that have a similar reservoir model. I can pick that model and when I say calculate, what we're going to do is in an instant, we're going to see when all of these wells are going to liquid load. So well number 36 is going to liquid load in one month. Our well, number 52, this is the one we're looking at, it's going to liquid load in four months. So we can see when in the forecast of these wells life, they're going to liquid load. This is huge. Uh, the other thing we can see is, is at exactly what gas rate is the well going to liquid load at what is, the, what is the diameter of either the tubing or the casing? Uh, what is the drawdown when the well is going to liquid load? This can help us prioritize what action we're going to take. But for me, I want to focus on well 52. It's going to liquid load in May and uh, basically four months after my forecast begins. And this is the gas rate it's going to liquid load at. And you may say, Graham, 7 million cubic feet per day. Why would it liquid load at such a high rate? Remember, this is casing. You need that kind of rate or greater in order to prevent liquid loading because of the diameter of the casing. Okay, let's look at this in a more traditional way. Let's do an IPR and TPC curve just to validate what's happening. Okay, so for that I'm going to go back to optimize. I'm going to launch a gas AOF TPC. Now I've skipped a few steps just for the entry of these things, but we're going to have a tutorial later so you can learn all the buttons and how to get the IPR and TPC generated. What I want to point out to you is this is our IPR right now right now before the well liquid loads. And we've got our current tubing performance curve with the casing. The important thing is that the TPC is solid line, which means we're not liquid loaded yet, but we're gonna start liquid loading once we get to about seven and a half million cubic feet per day. So the fact that we're not liquid loaded now confirms what we saw in the initial diagnostics looking at the history. Next thing we wanna do is look at our future IPR, and this is gonna be in May, and we can see that this is when the IPR is a bit lower and we are going to be in the dash line, which is a liquid loading condition. So this is just, again, confirming everything we've done so far with the monitoring tab, but just looking at it in a more traditional way. So what are the options to prevent liquid loading? Well, one of them is we can drop the wellhead pressure. We can add a compressor or whether it's a site compressor or centralized compressor. compressor. Let's see how that would affect things and how that would delay our liquid loading. So back in the model forecast, I can just drop the wellhead pressure down to 400 pounds. You can schedule this at a different time if you want, that's fine. So dropping that down, we get our new calculated bottom hole pressure considering the well bore, and we get our increased gas rate. And let's go back to our monitor, recalculate. And now we're not gonna look at liquid load for about 16 months into the future. So that's uh, one option. We could drop the wellhead pressure, which will expand the gas and increase its velocity in the casing, which is, well, the velocity is what we need to help liquid loading. So instead of this, why don't we consider some different tubing sizes? Why don't we consider what if we install two and seven eighths or two and three eighths? And for this, I'm gonna go back to my IPR TPC curve. And let's look at adding a two and seven eighths inch tubing. So, okay, so if we were to uh, install a two and seven eighths, this is our new tubing performance curve. And we can see we're going to be able to uh, produce all the way down to this rate before we liquid load. Or if we install two and three eighths, we're gonna get a slightly uh, increase in our uh, friction pressure drop, but we can produce down to an even lower rate before we're gonna liquid load, okay? So I'm gonna go with a two and three eighths. I wanna schedule this in my production forecast, this change in flow path to help prevent liquid loading. Let's do that right now. So we're gonna go to our editors, we're gonna go to our wellbore editor, and I should mention the way I'm doing this right now is how we do it, but this may uh, improve and change in the future, but this is how you can do this right now. So in our wellbore editor, we're going to add a wellbore configuration, and we wanna pick the date. So we figured that May 22nd is when the well is predicted to look a load. 
why don't we schedule the installation of the tubing a few weeks earlier just to be on the safe side, so May 1st. Okay, and for this, I'm gonna land the tubing at 7,100 feet. And I'm gonna pick from my tubing diameters two and three eighths. Okay, and we're gonna make the flow path tubing. So we see there's a picture of tubing in the well. Originally and historically, there was only casing, but we can schedule the tubing installation like this. Automatically, we can go back to our analytical model and we're gonna see that the new forecast is updated. We see the calculated bottom hole pressure here is a result of casing flow. And then when we install the smaller tubing, we get an increase in our bottom hole pressure due to friction and our gas rate drops slightly. But what's important here is we're trying to delay liquid loading. So let's see if we've achieved that. So we go back to our monitor, click calculate to update. And now we can see that we can forecast and produce this well for almost four years without any worry about liquid loading with the two and three eighths inch tubing. We could even schedule uh, compression on top of this and extend this liquid loading uh, solution further into the future. So again, this was just one well, but I wanted to show you how you can do a quick workflow using Harmony Enterprise and the Optimize module combined with your RTA reservoir models to really quickly see and predict when all of your wells are gonna liquid load in the future and start doing these what if scenarios to prevent that. So at the end of the day, what does this really mean for you? Well, it means if you've already done this RTA work, guess what, you can squeeze more value out of it. I showed you an analytical model today, but this works for your numerical models as well. Next, there's often a lot of arguments or experience factors when it comes to sizing tubing, but I wanna show you how you can stop the arguing and settle it here, but also tie it in with the time-based forecast. Whenever we do IPRs, it's always just a moment in time, but connecting this to a material balance and transient RTA model is something that really adds a time component to this whole challenge. Next, I know that production engineers and reservoir engineers, their paths cross now and then, but I think this uh, IPR TPC topic and wellbore optimization is a great way to leverage work that you're both doing. And finally, this can be about reducing cost. If you install the tubing too late, you might have to solve a liquid loading problem through swabbing or something else. And so using this workflow, you can prevent all that and increase your production as well. So just remember, back in school, when you wanted to irritate your friends, you'd make a spitball. And that was all about the velocity. How could you get the best velocity to fire out that spitball? And picking the size of your straw of your instrument matters. And the same is with your casing and your tubing. Thanks a lot for your attention and make sure you subscribe to be notified of next week's episode.